Okay, I have a student that has a problem tracking a shot and attaching a text layer to the track. Okay, so let's take a quick look at his footage by selecting uh, his problematic footage, dragging it into a blank empty timeline to create a new composition. All right, so I'm going to fit footage in there. Okay. All right, so it's just a pan. Oh, there's his, there's his attached footage, and I can see what he means. It's kind of sliding around in the frame. Okay. Now there are a couple of ways to approach tracking problems. One is using the uh, camera tracker, track camera, to create a 3D camera. But uh, I'm not sure that will work really well for this shot because I have a feeling that this floating is being caused by lens distortion and the After Effects camera is a perfect lens. It does not have distortion. So 3D camera tracking probably won't give us a good result. Um, I think the best approach is to analyze this shot, figure out if there is distortion, then just use the regular track motion features in After Effects to first stabilize the shot. Okay, we're going to first stabilize the shot and see if there's any lens distortion. If there is, we will then um, remove that distortion by tracking again and we're going to track rotation and scale. We're going to make sure rotation and scale are tracked. Alright, now he's kind of used up this area of the ground here it's kind of a difficult area to track anyway because there's not any real distinct detail in that area. I'm going to instead try placing my text layer along this hedge here. Okay, So what I want to do is let's just try and stabilize this hedge here. We'll find a spot. There's a pretty decent spot there. We'll move in and we'll find something bright. Now let me explain a little bit about the tracker. This outside box, that's the search area. If your shot's moving fast, you need a big search area. The inside box is the area that you are trying to track, the area of detail. The default is too small for most projects, so you need to expand that up a bit, make sure you got some detail. In the center, and let's just zoom in here, in the center is the attach point. You can attach, you can put the attach point any place you want. Okay, doesn't matter. I just want to pick some place in here that is good, and we're going to track forward. We'll just watch how the track goes. Looks like it's tracking pretty well. It heads out of frame. I'm going to hit the pause, hold the spacebar down, get the hand key, finish tracking the shot to the end. Okay. Looks like a good track. I'm just going to apply the stabilization to the shot for X and Y. And so what happens? Shot goes normally, and then we stop the hedge where we tracked, right here. Okay, so that doesn't move. But I want you to observe the perspective, the edge of the frame here. You can see that the perspective from the hedge changes when we stop the shot. I'm going to Delete everything we got here and start again. We're clean. Pressing the U key twice. Haven't applied anything. We are going to stabilize motion again. Pick a spot along this hedge to start. Okay, we're going to put our text over the hedge right here. We're going to track scale, rotation, and position. We're going to stabilize. So click on Stabilize Motion, Rotation, and Scale. Okay, so we want to pick a point far over close to the edge of the frame. That's where our distortion is. Make our search area a little bigger. Make sure this is a little bigger. Center this up in the detail that we're going to track. Put the attach point someplace where we can easily follow it. Do the same thing here. I'm going to go up here and we'll track these guys. Again, make the search area big enough. 
and I want to stay in the bushes and let's move the attach point right over to there. Search area a little bigger. You want to put a marker here so we can easily return to this spot. I just use the asterisk key on the numeric keyboard. Okay, and we'll track forward. Okay, looks like it's holding pretty well. It's going to be good enough. Hit apply, X and Y. Now what's going to happen is that we have frame will stop moving when we get to this point. And the scale should hold pretty well. We can still see a little distortion. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text layer, basically mashing down all the keys on the on the left side of the keyboard. That's Shift plus Alt Option plus Command plus T. Bring up the text tool. Um, test text. Yeah, I'm really original this morning. Okay. I'm going to set an out point. That's or an end point, and then we just move the text up here so that it matches the shot and see how that does. Now there's a little bit of perspective change but we can see that our text, especially if we attach it right to where our attach point was, that attach point's going to hold, it's going to hold really well right there. Okay? And if we stretch out our text layer So it covers the whole side. It looks like it, it holds pretty well. There's some scale changes in the middle. Again, lens distortion is hard to deal with. So we're going to make our best shot at adjusting this scale so that this text stays put. Okay? I'm going to slide the T. Let's get right over here. I'm going to slide the edge of the T. so that it just matches up with this little piece here. And then I'm going to set a scale keyframe. Okay. Got it. Okay. Then we're going to move to the end and I will move this back. And we'll take a look and see how that holds. Okay, going to have to adjust the scale. Careful to adjust the scale, not the position. Okay. Fit this in the frame. Our text layer should be pretty well stuck to the hedge. Little float, not too bad. Probably as good as we're going to get. Okay. Now we got that done. The simplest way to remove the distortion is to add a null layer. Okay, so layer, new, null. There's your keyboard shortcut right there. We just had a new null layer. We want to reveal the position and the scale and the rotation property of the null layer because we are going to tie them to the anchor point, anchor point, position, and scale of our stabilized layer. And we use parenting to take all the motion out and apply it to the text. Okay, so first is position to anchor point. That's really easy. Hold the Alt Option key down, use the pick whip, drag position to anchor point. That's all there is to it. Scale is a little complicated, so we'll save that for uh, later. But right now we're going to do the rotation property. What we want to do is put in the opposite rotation. Okay. I'm going to get that rotation property revealed. Okay, so what we're going to do with rotation is put in the opposite rotation. Hold down the Alt Option key, and we're going to subtract the rotation of our stabilized layer. That means stabilized layer rotates to the right, the null will rotate to the left. Okay, and that'll effectively remove it. Now let's talk about scale. It's a little more complicated. Okay. Uh, 
you have to make a correction, correct the scale. So let's just type C for correction equals, uh, I'm just going to type this and then I'll explain what happens. Okay, We're going to make an array first because scale is an array. So an array is an open and a closed square bracket and the default value for scale is 100. So it's 100 comma space 100. Okay. So help if I put another zero in there, wouldn't it? 100, 100. And from that, we are going to subtract the value, the scale value of this layer. Okay. Now, what that's going to do, if this layer is 100, the null is going to be scaled to zero. What we're going to have to do is add back in the original value for scale for the null layer. And we can do that just by typing value. Value plus, there we go, C. Go back here where nothing's moving yet and select both the text and the footage layer and make the null the parent. Now, all of a sudden, motion is gone and the text layer is stuck exactly where it should be.